party and uh, we were just playing games and we were doing a little flirting here and there um, and then he gave me his card because um, he did music and I was in into uh, rapping and things like that so he gave me his card and then I called him and that's how we end up on a date. <laughs> Can I borrow some of your wine? Uh, no, when I was a kid my grandfather he on several buildings or he managed several buildings in Chicago and um, one of those uh, buildings uh, Bobby Rush owned the studio in there. If y'all think I'm gonna leave my woman cause what somebody said you got to be crazy and out of your doggone head. And I just remember as a kid going down there and, and peeking my head in that room so many times, you know, it was like a thing we wasn't supposed to do and I did it. And, um, you know, I think that's where it started. Just me being exposed to that and seeing the big SSL board and not knowing what it is and appreciating it more now that I got a chance to be around something like that. In order for us to make it all work, we have to go to him. <laughs> he can't come here as often as he was when it was behind the house. So we just, we make it work that way by going to him, having dinner yes. with him, or on the weekend, just stopping in and with the family. So we, we make it work the best way we can. But um, I don't miss the strangers coming behind in my house. <laughs> Let me translate. He's never home, he needs to be home, and help me with these kids. <laughs> or I'm gonna lose my mind and leave you with these kids. <laughs> All along, you're gonna be a single parent with your studio, with your kids. Hello. Rise and shine. What do you do, Bryce? What's up, Gutter? Where you, where you at? You you on the move? I'm in the bed. <laughs> All right, I I'm... just looked at the clock. I just looked at the clock and I said, it's 10. I know it's what I'm supposed to be doing, man. I said, do Bear guy go to school? I was like, no, it's the weekend. I said, you know, because I'm asleep right here. And I'm like, damn, what is it? I said, do I think I'll catch my flight? I said, yeah, man, I'm back. And then, Bam. Then I said, your name just called. <laughs> there it go. I'm sitting here thinking right now, bro. That shit's funny as fuck. <laughs> Damn, even Bryce is here. So where we going? I'm on my way to the studio now, so we really like an hour behind anyway, so that's cool. What, he already there? Yeah, we, we riding right now. We recording right now. We're Are y'all filming as we talk? Yeah. Yeah, well, don't put this shit in the movie. <laughs> this, this make good. This make good TV. It's, it's real. It's real. Yeah, I'll be. I'm gonna be in the studio in a minute. I'm gonna get up. 
Ah, é bem. People need role models. And um, what better way to to do it than through the music? Best way in my book, through the music. Music is powerful. Let's see how this day go. On top of that, we just back to business. We got a, a pretty uh, book schedule today. Honestly, and I know this cliche, like my first CD or tape was um, Tupac, you know, and I, I got that and I just remember, I, I mean, I had songs before that that I, that I loved and, you know what I mean, that, that I really, really enjoyed, but the one, like getting that Tupac tape, buying it and um, listening to it, it was a Tupacalist listening to it and, and studying the flow and studying the music, but I was more into the sound and um, it just did something to me. You know, sometimes when I'm listening to stuff and when it becomes annoying, I try to try to find a, um, a different route. Like, but we don't always have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we always put delay reverb on it, ad libs and all that stuff, but I think it's um, content wise. Let me turn it down so I can see, see what you see. What it's kind of, if you listen to the background, it's kind of getting in the way. So, so let me show you what I'm listening to. The streets and that's when I seen a tear. Right there. The streets and that's when I seen a tear. So okay. it just depends on the record, like where you want it. At, where, yeah, it's chasing, mm -hmm. but it like it just depends on the record where you want it at. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want it if it's if it's space, if it's if it's spacing in there, you want it to kind of bleed. You want it to stand out. Or a pose as if it was an ad lib to keep the track. Yeah, but there's no breathing on there. Exactly. My name is Donovan. Um, go by DMAC. I'm a recording engineer, mixing engineer. Um, yeah, I've been here for about three months. I used to record a lot with my friends. They would rap, sing, you know, so just playing around, um, starting off in like junior high, um, taking up on it a little bit, college. You know, playing around in our spare time on like Audacity, like people usually used to do, um, since it was a free program. Then I ended up going to school at a full cell university um, for a couple of years, and then uh, then after that, you know, I just transitioned over here, um, picked up interning with Brace, and yeah, just took off from there. I really had dropped my pride on just like being one of those guys that didn't want to just like hit up a lot of people, because um, I was a little bit prideful about that, and then. Um, yeah, I just would always see Brace recording a lot of people, so I was always in his inbox like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, I bet you need an intern, or I bet you uh, you need some help or anything. Then I saw him start building up this building, um, so then I got even heavier, because I just assumed, like, well, if he's building a building, he must be, you know, uh, needing some more help sometime soon, because he's expanding his business. Um, to make a long story short, one of my friends, he ended up coming here once the building got open, recording with his like little cousins or something like that, and he just basically gave me a good word in, and he said, oh yeah, my, my friend, he's real serious about it, he went to school for it, um, and then from there, Brace was like, oh yeah, you know, he, he basically was like, um, <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's like a bird, he's all in my inbox, he's just, he just trying to hit me up all the time, so he makes me like, I'm just trying to shoot shots all the time, but um, but yeah, basically I was just in there just trying to trying to um, work my way in to try to network and uh, a good friend just helped me out, really just blessed me so that I could get in here and I could start networking and, 
and try to uh, and start up my mission career. You know, I get to um, I get to uh, do something that a lot of people don't get to do. <clears throat> but on the flip side of it, you know, it, it's business because I, I've turned it into something bigger than me. Um, I really, really enjoy the simple things and what we do over here. But I also like the fact that um, we get feedback from our, our clients and they they love the way we motivate, they love the way we push, and, and they love the way that any time, at any given time, you know, you can rub elbows with the who's who of the industry or the who's who of the local scene to continue to, you know, push forward in what you're doing, they learn and things like that. So I, I really enjoy the culture and being a part of it and being part of the wave, even if we, <clears throat> don't agree with each other, we all still pushing for the same result. It's crazy because like, when I, you know, start really just getting into the, you know, the, the studio, like professional studio wise, you know, I had this female introduce me to Bryce. So, you know, I linked up with him or whatever. And the first day, like, just this whole, this one he was recording in the trailer or whatever, you know, in the, in the back of his house. And like, just the, the setup, like when you when you first walk in, like he just had that, it just gave you good energy to just want to be there, you know, feel at home, make you feel like you were somebody. I've been on Brace for a minute. Um, I went to college here, I ran track at Arkansas Baptist. And like I said, that's when I really just started rapping. Then I moved to Russellville, I went to Arkansas Tech, you know what I'm saying, for a couple of years. And um, I just found out about Brace Face from, um, I was watching um, AMP. I used to watch how they was moving back in the day, their little rock group. And um, they used to come to Braceface. So I wound up just getting on like Instagram or something and finding Braceface. I hit him up. This back when he had a little shack behind his house. That's, re that's where we recording all his artists. It still looked good, just like all this. So I linked up with him. Love this sound. He made one of my one of my hits. I dropped a video too. That's when I really picked myself up, started investing my money, started trying to go a little bit with the rap. And um, started with him. And then I took off a rap for at least like a year or two. And when I came back, I went right back to race, and I came back with a hit song, and, and now I'm just going. With music, if we're talking music, you know, you have to work, work, work in the studio and you have to create that same energy, that same effort, if not even more, outside of the studio. Man, the biggest thing is patience. Patience and repetition, you know. Um, everybody wanna get it quick, you know, everybody wanna be successful. And we all wanna be successful, but it just don't happen overnight. And if it did happen overnight, you wouldn't even want that type of success, and everybody would be doing it. Uh, and now it seems like everybody do it, but everybody don't do it the same. You know, it's uh, it's a progression through time. So like you might have, you might have the chops to be a great pianist, or you might have the chops to be a great rapper, or a great engineer, or a great producer. But also with time, your ear develops and you start to hear stuff and, you know, so today you might think you hot, today you might think you got it all figured out, but like five, ten years from now, you'll look back and be like, dang, I didn't know nothing. You know what I mean? I didn't know shit, if I could say that on the interview. You know what I mean? That's what it feel like. You feel like, dang, I really thought I had it all figured out. So uh, just pace yourself uh, and understand that time is going to give you that extra boost that you need to keep going. You know, all you gotta do is make sure you stay around, stay healthy, uh, keep a positive mind, you know, make sure that you're here and you in, in your best condition because time is gonna figure it out for you. And then you'll be, you know, you'll be in the places where you need to be at. Uh, right now, um, I'm listening to him. I'm kind of studying him as he's going. So my thought process is to get more because I got things I want to do on the back end with his voice, like panning it, making it stronger and making it sound good. So we gonna layer it three times to give it a good blend. Them hard times, they never scared us. If anything, that's the shit that fed us. Cause we were scared up. We had no choice, so pick your head up. Them bitches back talking, don't say a word. Better pick your letter. Better get off your ass. Go get a bag, you got a man up. I know this shit ugly, but don't you fall. You gotta stand up. No matter what you going through, regardless, pick your head up. No matter what you going through, regardless, pick your head up. Going through daily situations, 
situations, I insist to get some money. Ain't no trust inside my heart, and ain't no love in me for nothing. I've been solo on this road, so I don't need this bitch for nothing. Know my brothers know the code, so they won't switch on me for something. I turn nothing into something, risk my life to free some money. Why you know I got a bag, no matter what your daddy bumming. I feel deep within my game, so every situation ugly. Earn my rights, put on that X, so every B I told be bloody. Been getting money with my blue, I'm back on act again. Swerving, ducking, dodging, 12, ain't never trying to three the pin. Time will tell her we for bell, cause all I wanna do is win. Can't see this shot no more, cause every time I wanna spin again. Can't see this shot no more, cause every time I wanna spin. Free the cam out that cell, let them see his twin. Break it made while you leave, granny, lean your hand. I had a homeboy, his name D. Shaw, he died. He used to do beats, and he always freestyled. And ever since then, I just became a freestyler. Back in college, all I did was freestyle. So I took that, and back when I went to college, he started sending me beats, and he was like, start making songs, start making songs. You know, then he passed. And so after that, I just picked it up. I just started doing it, started writing. Now I'm in love with writing. That's all I do now, write. I had no one to call. I was down on my ass, dirt deep in my drawers. Got this shit out the mud, so I'm mad cost when I smile. Had to use all my knowledge, now it's too bad just to talk. I know the game ain't free, cause y'all ain't tell me at all. It get ugly with me, might put my op on a pause. Be all the real out the cell, and lead them rest with the law. Well, with the music, well, like basically it's just about my style so i i grew like i said i was freestyling at first so you know i started writing and after i started writing i just started progressing with my style and my sound i got at least seven or eight voices that i got mastered that i can just switch into my flow and it's all good and she can taste like a deadly sin i know it ain't right no i know it ain't right I got started in music really young, but not really on purpose. Um, originally, it was just hearing music and enjoying it, but there was a video that I saw, a music video, and there was this young guy, um, a rapper, and I've been alive from when rap first started, right? So I knew when it was the thing, and but this guy was my age when I saw him on his music video, and that's what really let me know that I could do it. It let me know that it was possible, and that was when I first decided to try my hand at music. The only thing I can really compare it to for anybody that plays sports, it would be like walking in the gym and it's sort of like game time. I mean, I feel like the practice should be the person at home thinking about, I'm going to go to the studio and thinking about what I'm going to do. And you get in here and it's just like, all right, cool. All right, let's sit down. All right, what, what you got? What's the beat? Oh, you got the beat? Okay, cool, let's load that up. Let's get it going. So it's like, Sometimes it's rapid fire for some people, just like in some sports. And then other times it might be just slow motion, consistent, you know, just trying to get things done um, real meticulously with a whole lot of detail, um, just like sports. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the best way I can think to describe it. I don't worked in a lot of studios. I've lived in several states across the country. I've been doing engineering for a long time. So being here, particularly at uh, BFM and working with Braceface, definitely it's a, uh, it's a, it's kind of like, this is like the, the league. This is like the NBA, you know? And so working here and being a part of the environment is like, it's like playing for the Lakers or something, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, Bracey LeBron, you know what I mean? And then we like the role players, but you can be a star role player, you know what I'm saying? So since I didn't came in here, I didn't get a chance to meet a lot of artists and I went from, yo, who is the dude with the dreads to, yo, like, where Q know that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how we book with him. So it's kind of like, that's uh, that's what it's like. It's like being in the league. You know what I'm saying? The pros come here, some of the best artists, some of the best music get made up out of here. And uh, it's just ain't no place for no scrubs. You know what I'm saying? It's like the big boy league. So that's what it feel like, especially when you're a baller, you know, you didn't, I'm, you know, I played ball back in my days and I like competitive sports. So when you get a lot of artists in the room, a lot of producers, it's like that competitive instinct just come out and that's when the, that's when you shine. Well, usually I go, usually I got my own beats. Usually I got my own beats, but when, when it comes with Brace, Brace will just give me to lay down my chords. He'll, you know what I'm saying? He'll let me run through my songs at least twice or three times before I even go in there and put my voice on it. So after we do that, we go in there see if my voice sound, you know, 
right on that part and then we'll double it up. I always double my courses. I don't know, that's just my style. Some people don't do that. And after we do that, we just flow right into it. Brace catches all my flows. Like when he put little touches up on my own um, voice and everything else, he good. If I'm gonna do something, let's do it big. So when you walk in this door, I want you to be, I want you to be wild. I want you to, you know, it's, it's lights, camera, action. It's the big show, right? So, you know, I want to, I, I set out to create a facility that no matter what level you at, whether you're a beginner or you're a seasoned vet, you can come in here and you can get the proper experience and a proper facility that, that gives you that industry vibe versus people in our culture tend to say, well, I'm going to go to Atlanta or I'm going to go to Memphis and because I want to be in a professional studio. But I, I want to think that we killed that, you know, and, and created something right here to where everybody can come and appreciate. Uh, we want to expand. I was talking to him about expanding the studio to different areas like Atlanta, where it's hot at, you know. He has an awesome studio and he has good engineers. He's one of the best engineers. So expanding would be just the next level, LA. Um, and it would take us to, you know, all over the world. So expanding would be the best thing for us to reach our ultimate goal. And that's like getting his name out there and his brand to the next level. Where do y'all ride at? He did this on that slope down there we ride the Like no studio in Little Rock, no studio. I, I didn't like the sound, and I, I ain't like the sound. I had like the cat out in Conway wig, and um, he was just always booked up. So I had somebody told me about Brace Face one day. It was in the backyard. We was when we pulled up, it was to a house, and I'm like, oh shit, here we go with this bullshit. Niggas just sent the nigga to a house studio. I was just, I was pissed but when we so he like come to the back so we walk around the back we get to the back and we walk in and i'm like oh shit this motherfucker nice <laughs> he has some nice shit like the shit was set up so player i was like oh yeah this it and then but i was like you know let's see what it sound like and if he can record and mix and shit we gotta look him up Davies. hello Davies. I heard you heard of davies yeah they want to talk about Original Davies? Yeah. Okay, he just dropped the album. Yeah, yeah. He about Fora. <laughs> yeah. Who? Fora? Fora. Yeah, that's the only thing I like. J. Cole probably sit on the top, like the most notable of what they do, but they all like in that new wave, a new artist, and then you got the the country community that that they indulge all the time in their music. Like yeah, country yeah, is yeah. always outselling always. everybody. It's slowly coming. It's slowly coming. And it's a little coming. bigger too, population. Yeah, yeah, population. You yeah, know, the population does. Yeah. I mean, it definitely does too. As a person, Shamar is the most loving person. When he loves somebody, he loves hard. Um, anybody that he deals with, he loves them to the max. Like, he gives everybody the same respect. He treats everybody the same, no matter if they're a coworker or an employee or his wife or his kids, he treats everybody the same, so. It's like, it's really like a, it's, it's definitely like a, like a mentor, mentee type of, type of uh, environment, you know, um, like having a teammate that's, a, that's obviously a veteran, um, but then willing to show you the things that, that got him to that point, you know, so he's not gonna be selfish with knowledge, he's always gonna be willing to show you um, the things that you're doing right. He's definitely not gonna be afraid to tell you things that you're doing wrong, you know, but just as someone that's that's willing to put aside your pride and, and be 
um, have some humility about themselves. You just have to be able to take that so that way you can improve. So he's just always looking to make everybody better. He actually helped people develop they sound, you know? And then, cause like stuff I learned from Bracey, you could take it to other places. Cause you know, I record in Atlanta, you know, Louisiana, everywhere, you know, when you be on the road. So stuff I learned from him, I mean, I take it everywhere. We, we like to push peace and we like to push, you know, brotherhood and we like to push, you know, if we from a same, the same area, we, we want everybody to collectively get where they should go and do it together, you know, with unity. But with that being said, it's always going to be people that disagree or have disagreements. So, yeah, I, I have clients that has had public, you know, feuds and, and, and beefs that made it all the way to the highest level of media. But, um, you know, we've t we've we've maintained our relationships through it by staying out of it, but also by on the back end of it, you know, they can tell you that I was right there saying, hey, man, let it go. Hey, man, you know, y'all are y'all are bigger than that. You know, that's why he's so awesome. And that's why so many people keep coming back to him, because he builds a personal relationship with them. met him I didn't know he was bald-headed because I didn't date guys that were bald-headed I just like hair and waves and stuff like that so he would always wear this rag on his head and a hat and for the longest I did not know he was bald-headed <laughs> and he was kind of like embarrassed about it himself because he was so young he lost hair at a really young age so um, when I first met him, he always had the hat on, and then we went on like probably our third date, and he took his hat off, and I was like, oh my gosh, you're bald-headed. Up next on Studio Live. You know, we're from Arkansas, so you know, too many people don't get the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to be here. Like, then with the rap, the rap, shit was the biggest thing that ever happened to a nigga though. You know what I'm saying? Like. I used to go through a lot of shit, like lost a lot of people in the streets and shit. So like, it was one of the ways a nigga can express himself. These dudes is just it, it are crazy with with how they are so creative with the way that they're able to express themselves. Don't you kiss her, cause it's me on her lips, on her lips. So much money in my pocket, got it loose. So, like, that's what I saw in him and just the potential to be great. So, we're still here today. Every day, I have to fight to prove my love. <laughs> Rolling? No. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, so... Tell me what your biggest pet peeve is of Aisha. <laughs> 